Thank you. Hello and welcome to Southside Sunday School. I'm Joe Farless. I'll be uh, leading in our study today. We will be in the book of Colossians, chapter uh, 3. Colossians chapter 3, we'll be going over several verses. And the last of our series is um, uh, about God talking to us. And um, the question, the overarching question for our message today or for the lesson today is, does God's voice, does God's message lead you to become more like Jesus? You know, it is God's desire to conform us to the image of Christ. And I think um, through, the, through our life experiences, we have a little bit of a difficult time in keeping that in focus. It's that everything is designed to work together. Uh, much like Romans chapter 8 says, um, work together for good to those who are the called according to his purpose. Uh, God's purpose for our life is to conform us to the image of Christ, which would bring us back to the image of himself uh, that we were originally created for. But um, we'll be going over verses uh, 1 through 4 in Colossians chapter 3. Hope you have your Bibles or at least your Sunday school book. Um, it has been a good series, hadn't it, of uh, uh, the voice of God. Uh, you know, what does God's voice sound like? What does it lead you to? Uh, it never uh, contradicts um, his word and never contradicts his uh, character. Um, and now uh, the uh, desire of God, our Father, to conform us to the image of his Son, Jesus Christ. So without uh, going any farther with that, let's uh, join our hearts in a word of prayer before we continue. Father, I thank you for your love and guidance throughout this week and for how you continue to bless us. Father, you cover us with your grace and with your mercy. You provide for us, Father, for uh, all of our needs uh, according to your riches in heaven. We thank you, Father, for this lesson and we thank you for this series. We thank you for the writers of our um, lessons, our commentary. We thank you for the teachers that, um, that you lead and guide. And we thank you, Father, for uh, those who tune in and to listen. Uh, Father, that uh, we can study a portion of your scripture, of your word, and come closer to you. That we can learn to put aside our uh, earthly desires, Father, and become more like Christ. So I pray, Father, in today's lesson, you just help us to do just that. Help us to listen with open hearts, with open uh, minds, Father. I pray that your word and through your spirit speaks to us in a way that uh, uh, will lead us to change, uh, Father, or to solidify the things that we already uh, know to do. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So what does it mean that uh, Christ is our life? You know, what does it mean to be conformed to the image of Christ? What practices have helped you to set your mind on the things of God? Paul wrote to the people at Colossae. Uh, in chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. We could spend our entire time on any one of these parts in our lesson today uh, in Colossians chapter 3, um, beginning with this. Uh, so if you have been raised with Christ, Paul had described a transformation, a, um, uh, the transformation of personal experience uh, that once people are saved. 
Uh, therefore, uh, so if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above. Seek the things above. His remarks are partly a defense of the Christian view of a heresy threatening the church in this particular church, but uh, Paul explores a doctrine that uh, Bible studies, uh, or Bible students typically call sanctification. It's to sanctify ourselves, to remove ourselves from from one set of values and um, life skills to uh, another totally uh, different set. Uh, and if you can understand the transformation that takes place in the life of a believer or, or the new believer, you know, I don't know how long it's been for you. Uh, I don't think I'll ever forget that uh, transformation in my life, though it's been some um, 35 or 36 years ago. Uh, it's, a, it's a dramatic conversion. Paul compared the conversion experience to dying with Christ, leaving the old way of life behind. The Christian has been raised to a newness of life, had been raised uh, with, with Christ. Now the saved person has a whole new perspective on life, the Christian worldview and value system, including a Christian worldview, um, a whole new perspective on life. We should now seek the things above. The Christian should focus on truths and values that reflect uh, the character traits of Jesus. If you want a, uh, a good place to start on that, of course, you can. Uh, uh, today's scripture is is really good, but you can read something really familiar: the um, the, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, the Beatitudes take us through that transformation process of being, um, of, of becoming aware of our sinful nature, of our uh, great sorrow that we should have. And it's, it's, it, it is a um, uh, verbal picture of our life uh, immediately before, during the time of transformation, and immediately after that transformation, how we should and could uh, act um, and carry on our life uh, since knowing Christ. Uh, but the Christian should focus on the truths and the values that reflect life and um, uh, Jesus' character traits. Um, Paul's uh, comment about our priorities resembles his instructions in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8. Let me just read that real quick. Uh, Philippians chapter 4. Uh, verse 8, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if, there, if anything worthy of praise, think on these things. You want to know how to order your day-to-day -day life? Get up in the morning and, and pray that pray that scripture. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Lord Jesus, help that to be true in my life. Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, help me to, to show forth those things uh, in my life, in, in my mannerisms, in, in the way that I talk to people, in the way that I react to people, the way that I present myself. Uh, help me to be that ambassador of, of Christ that you want me to be. Paul now draws a, a very sharp contrast and when he says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. Um, drew a contrast between things above and the earthly things and he did not deny the reality of the earthly experiences that we have. We are all individuals and that's one of the great things about uh, our salvation experience and a lot of people uh, just the, um, the uh, unsanctified uh, don't understand a whole lot of times is that um, uh, we're not trying to make cookie cutter Christians. Um, James and, and John uh, Christ named the sons of thunder because they came back from a missionary trip. And he said, boys had to go. 
And he said, they didn't want to have anything to do with us, with the word that you taught us, or with you. He said, you know what you should do? Jesus, call fire and brimstone down from heaven. Rain on that village and wipe them all out. And uh, he said, you sons of thunder. He said, just shake the dust off your feet and we'll go find somebody else uh, to talk to. Uh, he called them the sons of thunder, but he didn't chastise them for that. He simply, uh, he simply gave them that name. Uh, Peter uh, was a, uh, um, well, he was just Peter. Uh, we can read a whole lot about him, and that's a, that's a point for another lesson. Uh, the, the characteristics and the, um, uh, the attitudes and personalities of the disciples. Uh, and, it, and it's really funny to uh, see uh, who uh, followed him, who, whom Jesus chose and who followed him uh, because they were all different in, in our personality. We're not trying to make cookie-cutter Christians. Um, God leaves us with our own personality, warts and all. Uh, you can talk to people that will uh, never set foot in a church. You can talk to people in your realm of influence uh, that will never talk to me, and I can do the same. Uh, I can talk to people in my realm of, of influence uh, that will uh, may never uh, talk to any of you. But that's the wonderful thing about our personality. But God wants us all to have these character traits of purity and truth and, and honor and righteousness, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, whatever is, if there's anything excellent, worthy of praise, Christ said, or Paul said, think on these things. He stressed this Christian's value system. Uh, the heresy that Paul opposed in the earlier chapters apparently focused on attention to issues involving food and drink and calendar days and how that was causing a great divide uh, in the church. But the real value, he says, is Jesus. And he encouraged um, another church, in, in, in that one in, in uh, Philippi, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, he said to adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus. The attitude or value system of uh, distinctive uh, Christian values includes humility, looking out for the interest of others, truth, honor, justice. It's not just a worthy speech. Uh, it is something that we must embrace, that we must uh, inhabit. Uh, those kind of character traits need to inhabit our life so that when people look at us, they can see the God who made us, that they can see Jesus Christ, that they can see that love, that they can see that acceptance, that they can see that righteousness. I think we all stand in a particular place of darkness from time to time, if not a whole lot of the times in our life. We don't always mirror the characteristics and the attitudes that God wants us to. I think this lesson today is a lesson for everybody. Paul continued in verse 3, Paul continued to compare the salvation experience to, dies, to dying and rising from the death. Uh, early, earlier, he used the symbolism of baptism uh, to reinforce before and the after qualities of a Christian conversion. Being immersed in baptism symbolizes the death of our old way and the, the raising of our newness to life. Typically a dead person was buried in the ground. A Christian, however, is buried with Christ. And that's what he says. Uh, For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And you want a good chapter to read on that, uh, read Romans chapter six um, in, in its entirety. It's a, it's a really good chapter, uh, but it challenges us. Uh, to look at things from a different perspective, uh, especially when we say that we have no control over the sin that we have, the, the fleeting thoughts that enter our minds and the, the practices that we do. Uh, we are dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Um, while that is spiritually true, 
Um, others suggest that uh, uh, what Paul meant was that Christ is the new source of life for a believer. Uh, let me just read this. Say that while we live here on earth, we have identified completely with the risen Jesus. He should be the total focus of our lives here and now. And when Jesus returns at the end of human history, we will share in his glory. That is a promise uh, that he made to all uh, believers. Today, people often summarize the value systems, uh, their own value systems, with a focus on work, on on sports, or chosen field of, uh, of employment, uh, with their, uh, their focus on their families. While all these activities are important uh, to believers, ultimately, life for us is uh, concentrated on our relationship to Jesus Christ. Or it should be. Um, is that your true value system today? I think we all struggle with that. If not um, on a regular basis, at least from time to time. Do we take our eyes off of Jesus and we start looking at the things of the world? We start uh, um, either focusing on the, uh, the values of, of the luxuries that we have, of money, of things, of, of, of people that come in and out of our life and not focus on Christ and what he wants us to do with our life. Paul said in Philippians, I mean, excuse me, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Uh, I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ who lives, but Christ lives in me. It is no longer I who live, depending upon your version of Scripture. Uh, he says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Um, I once read a book where a man was invited to sit down and play cards just to pass the time. Uh, not necessarily to gamble very much of what he had, but uh, that was that was the card game that he had. And we're not talking about gambling on any of that kind of stuff today. This is just the point. He said, I can't do that. And he said, oh, sure you can. Well, you know, if you, if you don't know the game, we'll teach you how to do it. Uh, you know, like I said, it's not very much. Anybody can afford this. We're, you know, we're, we're just essentially playing for nothing, but we're just playing to pass the time. He said, no, you don't understand. He said, I can't use my hands. And he said, what do you mean you can't use your hands? And he said, they're no longer mine. He said, they're at the end of your arms. What do you mean you can't use your hands? We don't understand. And he said, since I've given my life to Christ, he has, I have given my hands to him too, and therefore I cannot play such a game anymore. Are there things in your life, and I know there are things in mine, which I've not yet put in the hands of Jesus to control? And if we are indeed dead to sin and alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord, uh, that is an ongoing everyday reality in our life. Why haven't we surrendered those things to him? But you see our sinful nature and our, and our, uh, our willpower uh, sometimes fights against us with that. But let's go on with this. Um, our uh, lesson writer talks about uh, the voice of God. It was highlighted through these uh, past uh, several weeks of our Bible studies. He said, we might try to consider which voices are the loudest in our lives today. We get appeals for attention and response from multiple sources, so we're overwhelmed, and the message and the voices that we hear uh, sometimes help us or cause us to ignore God's voice in our life. How tuned in to, are you to the voice of God? Several times in our study, we have read or studied that uh, God can speak to us in many ways. And one of the primary ways that God reveals his will to us is through his written word. Do you study the Bible every day? I had to confess to my Sunday school class um, this past Sunday, uh, that, that lately I've not been as good with my everyday reading as I should. 
Uh, I do read uh, devotions every day, but I've not uh, literally opened open the Word. I get uh, uh, the verse of the day on my phone, but sometimes that that's, uh, uh, stops just short of uh, uh, sitting down and reading God's Word, reading, reading the before and after verses of, of uh, what that verse is talking about. And I think we need to read it all. And I'm not, you know, if that's your way of, of connecting with Scripture, now I'm, not, I'm not downplaying that at all. What I am saying is there's a whole lot more in these. I don't think we'll live long enough to get every single verse in the days uh, that we have. Uh, so go and read, read your Bible. Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 9. Therefore, put to death what belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient, and you once walked in these things when you were living in them. But now put away all the following, anger, wrath, malice, slander, filthy language from your mouth. <coughs> Excuse me. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old self with its practices. Again, we're talking about being dead to sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ. He uses word pictures and uh, specifically talks about um, uh, individual earthly uh, natural kind of, of influences in our life and, and urges in our life. Um, please don't take this as a comprehensive list of, of do's and don'ts. Uh, it's, it's much greater than that. Uh, these are just, um, these are just individual things that Paul, uh, the, through the Holy Spirit, wrote down to talk about, and they may be, have been specific to this church at this time. But um, there's five sins that mentioned um, in that verse, um, and you may be uh, uh, it might be a disadvantage to to think, or it is a disadvantage to think that maybe you know if you have not committed any of those those uh, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed um, this week that you may be okay. But there are other things. There are many other things. Uh, anger, wrath, malice, slander, filthy language. Maybe you don't have, uh, maybe that's not your problem. Uh, maybe, maybe the love of things, maybe the love of money. Uh, again, it is not meant to be a comprehensive list of, of the things that, uh, uh, that God wants us to put away. Uh, but it's just an example. It just uses word pictures uh, for those. Uh, Paul warned that committing such sins as these was, would result in experiencing God's wrath. Because of these, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient. Uh, in Romans chapter 1, Paul described the function of sin as, letting, uh, the, as God letting us suffer the so-called natural consequences of our sinful actions. If you've never read that, I encourage you to read Romans chapter 1 where time and time again, well, three times it said that uh, Paul wrote that God delivered them over to the inevitable results of the sin that they had. You can find that in Romans chapter 1, verses 24, 26, and 28, where he gave them over to uh, their sins, specifically of a sexual nature. Rather than zapping us uh, with a lightning bolt or something, uh, God leaves us to... Uh, God leaves us alone to suffer the consequences of our sins sometimes. Uh, perhaps you're suffering the consequences of, of sin in that way. Uh, repent. Repent. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of those sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, we can never be taken out of God's hand, but we can... Uh, mar that image of Christ inside of us. Uh, Paul reminded the readers of the, that their lives had been changed and the salvation experience, and they should be aware of, of, of 
the before and after contrast of the differences that um, that salvation experience made in your life. It's a, it is a transformation. It is not uh, um, uh, it is not heart surgery. It is complete transplant. God gives us a brand new heart, a brand new. Uh, desire. He, he, he stops us in the midst of who we are when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. When we make that decision, there's a transformation that, that goes on in our life. And we are no longer that person. We have died to the influence of sin and we need to be alive in Jesus Christ. But that's something that, that we must participate in. Uh, it's something that, that we can, there are things that we can do. Um, Paul offered that uh, last list of anger, wrath, violence um, to talk about, um, uh, to talk about other uh, issue, issues that were going on. Um, but instead, you know, he talks about them throughout scripture, uh, the things that we should stay away from. One of the, one of the things that um, um, uh, the book of James tells us, excuse me, uh, talking about earthly wisdom and godly wisdom. He said, uh, who is wise among you in understanding? Let him show by his good, beha good behavior, his deeds and the gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. The wisdom that it... Uh, this wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic even. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every evil thing. But, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peace-loving or peaceable. It's gentle, it's reasonable, it's full of mercy and good fruits, impartial, free of hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in in peace by those who make peace. Wow, what a list. We don't have to um, succumb to this earthly wisdom. And I think a whole lot of times that's where we want to get our wisdom. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Then the second thing is peace loving. Are you at odds with anybody right now? Are you the peacemaker in that relationship or in that situation? We should be. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we should be. I only have a couple more minutes. Um, so uh, uh, I want to get to these final verses right here. And let me just read those. Colossians chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. And have put on... Uh, and put on the new self, you are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your creator. In, in Christ there is not Greek nor Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Zacanthian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience bearing one with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a grievance against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so also are you to forgive them. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. My brothers and sisters in Christ, can we today just covenant together and with our Lord and Savior Put on compassion, kindness, humility. What a difference that would make in our lives, in our family, in our communities, in our state, in our nation, in our world. If every single believer in Jesus Christ started putting on, started the practice of committing these every single day of our life. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Our Father, we thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the transforming power of our belief in Jesus Christ. When we give our lives over to you, Father, they uh, you raise us to newness of life. Help us, Father, to uh, look for that wisdom that is from above and to put on 
the things that you would have us to, Father, to put off the things that we don't need. Help us to refocus our attention on you, and thank you, Father, for never, uh, uh, never abandoning us, that you're always there. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.